Hello and welcome everyone to the 11th episode. Is it number 11? Yeah, the 11th episode yeah. of that some yeah. crazy shit. Or is it 10? Oh, is it not 11? No, it's 11. Oh. My bad. It is oh, 11. see, it is 11. See, episode 11 of that some crazy shit with Kelly and James. Uh, my name is Kelly, and as always, my co-host is James. How's it going? Number 11. That's cool. That is cool. I, I think Oh, I'm good. James. What's up with you? You know it what? I cool. am... Considering I am we just kind of said, let's do this. Yeah. So, number 11. Uh, how's your week been? It's been good. I'm excited for the nice weather we're having right now. No snow. No snow yet. No snow. Well, I am excited because number yeah, 11. Yeah, no snow yet. This, yep, no snow. This time, it's not just me and you and some crazy topics. We actually have a guest. Uh, I think acupuncture is some crazy shit. I, I use acupuncture. And so we have a guest that has come on with us today. Uh, Chris Shiflett is an acupuncturist and uh, he's going to be with us today for the full hour. And we're going to be talking about why acupuncture is some crazy shit. So I'm excited. Uh, But as always, James, you know, uh, you know, we decided to put this podcast together. And so, you know, if this is the first time you've listened to us, you know, welcome and thank you. We are honored that you've chosen to, you know, spend an hour with us because there's a lot of podcasts out there. You can yes, listen thank to, you, thank you. you know, pretty much anyone. So you listening to us, we are truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we always like to kind of, you know, give you an idea of like kind of, you know, the why the why behind the podcast. So, you know, James, you know, tell everybody, you know, the why behind the podcast. Well, the why behind the podcast, Kelly, is so that we tend to talk about subjects that are off the beaten path. Okay, we talk about, you know, like like today, acupuncture. This is not something that people just sit around and talk about at work. Maybe they do, but you don't really want to tell everyone. You know, so what we're trying to do is bring a little light to some of these off the beaten path topics, subjects. You know, we talk about the paranormal, metaphysical, and, you know, just everyday thing and things that we think are crazy. And when I say crazy that we shit. think they're crazy, not that they're insane and these people are crazy, yeah, it's just crazy shit, you know. That, and it, some of the stuff is like, it works. Why don't more people believe in it? Or, you know, I've seen it, but people don't believe me. That's the crazy part, you know. And today we're hoping to shed a little light on acupuncture. Yeah, because to me, acupuncture is some crazy shit because it works, right? And so right. I think if you're if you're thinking about it or you're on the fence, I think today's guest is a great place to start um you know uh as always you know we're not experts and because we're not experts on acupuncture we have gotten an acupuncture expert because we never claim to be experts you know we want to keep everything positive we want to inform and we want to interact with you the audience and so that is kind of the reason why we do the podcast you can get us on social media i think i've said this every single podcast we are on facebook we are on instagram we are on youtube we are on spotify uh no that's not a that's not a social media no we have email so we have all twitter. these different ways so wait twitter? yeah twitter so wait think about this we have facebook instagram twitter youtube email that's at least five different ways you can get it at and it's all that some crazy shit that's the name of the podcast, so that's usually where you'll find us. Um, but any anyway, rate, I just want to get right into the guest because I want to spend most of the time with Chris and not me and you, James. So, you know, I will say the uh, during random bullshit, I'll give everybody our our links for the social media. But I think we should just get right into it. So I would like to introduce Chris Shifliff. 
He is a acupuncturist and there's more to his education. And I'm, I'm going to let him tell you what it is because I don't want to muck it up. So with no further ado, Chris, how you doing? Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited that you're here. Yes, hi, Kelly. Thank you. Hey, hi, Kelly. James, thank you, guys. I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, my name is Chris Chivalet. I am the uh, owner of South River Acupuncture and Herbal Medicine Clinic here in Aurora. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in integrative therapeutic practices, and I have a master's of science in traditional Chinese medicine. I am a nationally board certified uh, acupuncturist and uh, herbalist, or Chinese herbal medicine. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. Been uh, like talking about this fun stuff. Big fan of like Coast to Coast and Art Bell for a long time. So talking about this oh, stuff is fun. Me no, too. I like don't talk about that stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. But yeah, I'm always happy to talk to people about acupuncture. And yeah, some of it is a little out there sometimes to wrap your head around it. But I think there's a lot of logical ways to look at it and to explain it. So I'm more than happy to talk to you guys today. Right on. And I like Art Bell too. He's a good man. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So I I have um I have a bunch of questions that I'm I'm gonna ask you, Chris and and James feel free to chime in but the first question that I have because I think you know um, when I first met Chris because I go to Chris he is my acupuncture dude Um, when I go see this man I always tell him to use all his witchy powers to cure my pain and he does it every single time it is fantastic so I think one of the first questions I ask him is where in the hell did acupuncture come from like who who showed people how to do this did it come from aliens tell me where acupuncture came from you know i think uh it's kind of hard to say i mean when you have something this old um you know we're talking at least you know two thousand years old if not older i think they recently found some older kind of medical documents that they've went back like four thousand years Um, So you kind of get into this space where it's kind of hard to say how this happened. And so, you know, traditionally you have this idea, was it just experimentation where people figure, oh, if I push this point, that problem gets better. Who knows? You know, Chinese history and kind of you kind of get to this kind of near mythical kind of spot. Um, But a lot of this kind of stuff, they talk about this figure called the Yellow Emperor Wang Di who descended from heaven on a dragon and was the first emperor of China. And he gifted human beings with, you know, civilization and math and agriculture and medicine. Um, And that included acupuncture, right? You have this other kind of near mythical figure called Shen Nong, who's like the god of husbandry. And he taught people, you know, animal husbandry and herbal medicine and things like that. You know, and these are kind of like these almost deific kind of figures um, in Chinese history or kind of myth, legend, however you want to put it in that kind of historical context. So, you know, was this, you know, somebody who came from heaven in that capacity? I don't know. Um, You know, that old, it's hard to say. I mean, traditionally, I think they say a lot of it was, you know, trial and error type of things. But, you know, it's something that old. I mean... I've been looking at kind of, uh, you know, ancient cultures and, you know, lost civilizations and that kind of stuff. I'm a big student of history myself. Um, and so, you know, when you go that far out, I mean, how much do you really know? I mean, as, as advanced as some of those cultures are 4,000 years ago, you know, how do you figure this out? So I, is it aliens? I really don't know, Kelly, but, uh, you know, hard to say. Hey, I tell you what though, Chris, if you, if you came to me and I was in pain and you cured my pain, I don't care if you came down the street. I think you came from heaven. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is with me and pain. So, no, I get Yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I know that acupuncture is really old because we've talked about it. And so that made me think, you know, if, if acupuncture, you said, is over 2,000 years old, so they weren't using needles back then. What were they using? So uh, there is these kind of things that they would call beyond stones. And so these would be kind of like, you know, good two inch stone that would have either a rounded tip or some type of kind of more of a pointed tip on it rather than like a blunt instrument. 
and they would use that to stimulate acupuncture points. Um, there's a lot of things where you could just, I mean, you can use your thumbs or fingers or whatever you want to kind of stimulate those points. Needles are a good effective way to do that. There's some evidence too, that prior to using needles or these stones, you know, we might've talked about this, uh, therapy called moxibustion, which is primarily a heat therapy where we burn an herb kind of near to, or on top of an acupuncture point with a medium. There's a lot of evidence that this was done prior to the use of acupuncture itself. So, you know, there's a lot of ways. It's kind of this idea, though, is that you're stimulating these kind of acupuncture points to do with heat or pressure. And then eventually, as we get into Bronze Age, we're able to make these fine instruments, we start to get needles. Um, so it's, you know, progression. You, you don't necessarily have to have a needle to do kind of acupuncture or get that effect. You can use just about anything to stimulate that point. Cool. Okay. I had heard that, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Otzi, the Iceman. Um, uh, yeah. they, found, they found that he had tattoos on pressure points and that he was 2,000 years old. I think that's interesting. So they've been around forever and it's just crazy how it works. It is. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of interesting stuff about you know how old some of this is and I, I think you're, what you're talking about, the Otzi man, I think he, I believe he had points for kind of some low back pain, like they had tattoos where he should push on those points. And I think they showed that he had spinal degeneration or arthritis um, when they were able to look at that guy's bones and the x-rays and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of things like, you know, cupping and things like that. Like that's, you know, we use it in Chinese medicine, but that's kind of like a global kind of health practice. I mean, you can see that. Now, what is cupping, Chris? Cupping is primarily what you do is you use some type of like jar or like there's these glass cups or some kind of uh, device that is has a nice smooth thick lip on it that you're able to kind of create some suction and you usually do that through what i do is what i call fire cupping um so kind of what you do is you'll use like a forcep with a pair uh, like a pair of forceps with some uh, cotton ball soaked in some high proof alcohol you kind of light that on fire you stick it in the cup you pull it out right that fire burns off the oxygen and then you put it quickly over the person's skin it creates a differential in pressure and it starts to pull the kind of tissues up. And then, you know, with that kind of increase in pressure, you get an increase in blood flow in that area. And then a lot of times you can just leave those there. You can move them across the body. And what that can do is kind of break up connective tissue adhesions, fascial adhesions like knots that we kind of have in the body. And, and you know, usually for like upper back and neck and shoulders and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Uh, you can use it for a lot of other things too. Um, so, you know, right now, you know, physical therapists will do this. They call it myofascial decompression. So, but it's been around. I mean, you can see it, you know, I do it in Africa with horns, you know, it's big in Europe and Russia. It's a big thing. Like oh, everyone, you know, when I have Eastern European patients like, oh yeah, my grandma used to do that for cough and stuff like that. Uh, they use it in oh, the yeah, United like States a, like Civil a, War. Oh, like a, yeah. You know, Just for, uh, pulling out shrapnel and stuff like that. So some of these things are, you know worldwide kind of global phenomenon so it's you know how old is this i don't know um but there's a lot of a lot to it so a lot, a lot of history well you know wow, because incredible. we can relate we can relate everything back to a movie at least i can so cupping they you actually can. did they actually did a scene with cupping in the godfather part two when Alfredo was a baby and had pneumonia and the lady was like a nurse and she came in and she lit it on fire and she put it, the cup on the baby's stomach and then quickly took it away to help treat his pneumonia. So I'm just saying it. it Not everything is about the Godfather Kelly. Everything you want to yeah. know about life. Not everything you can relates learn to Godfather. And Godfather yeah. one and two. Not so much three, one and two. So, yeah. Anyway, Chris, that's a whole nother topic. We could do a whole episode on why everything you need to know is in the Godfather, but we won't do that. Okay, we're going to digress. So, okay, Chris, so what type of training do you need to become an acupuncturist? Or at least at your your level, because you're more than just an acupuncturist. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I do acupuncture and herbal medicine. So 
kind of overall what we're really talking about is traditional Chinese medicine, right? And so traditional Chinese medicine is kind of a big encompassing medical system. And so this includes it's a there's a diagnostic system to it. And there's act there's a whole bunch of different modalities and that includes acupuncture, herbal medicine, um, these things that I'm talking about, like manual therapies, like cupping, uh, there's a technique called gua sha, this moxibustion that I'm talking about, dietary therapy, um, all this stuff falls under this branch of traditional Chinese medicine. And so acupuncture is just one of the tools that I use. Um, but as far as kind of training goes, at least in the United States, you know, each state has a different thing, but basically kind of what you need is you kind of need this master's degree in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, or acupuncture and generally that's you know the training is usually about like three years somewhere in that range depending on how fast you want to do it it's usually a year-round thing so it's a full three years um, it's a mix of kind of didactic and clinical training and so you end up with you know about 2,000 to 2,500 hours I think right now I think about you know 1,500 of that is probably going to be your clinical training um, and then in the United States, most of these states require national board certification. And so that's an additional kind of thing you need to do. And so that's you're taking these national exams um, that kind of test your skill level and knowledge base to make sure that you can, you know, you understand these concepts, you can make accurate diagnosis, come up with treatment plans, and you have an understanding of cautions, contraindications, and how to safely treat your patients. Um, additionally, though, I mean, your training never really ends. Most states have continuing education requirements as well. So there's always extra stuff to learn. A patient comes in that you don't really know something about um, or is a little something you haven't treated before. There's always, there's always learning more and trying to get more kind of knowledge. That's kind of what attracted me to doing this is I probably will never know all of it. Um, and so it's, you know, it's this big intellectual kind of puzzle thing and trying to add more and more understanding um, as I go along. So yeah, I mean, to answer your question about three years, um, and board certification to get you started. And then it's a lifelong learning journey to kind of get mastery of it. Interesting. Perfect. So So, when you do, uh, your herbal part of it, um, how does that work? Uh, is it, I guess I, I don't even know what question I'm asking. This is just crazy. How, how do you incorporate herbal, the herbal part with acupuncture? So herbal medicine is kind of its own beast. Um, and so really what we refer to that to is internal medicine. Okay. And so just as we kind of figure out what's going on with you to figure out what acupuncture points we want to do, right? Um, we can use herbal medicines kind of in a similar way. And so each of the herbs will have certain kind of actions or functions or kind of do certain things in the body. And so really what we do in in Chinese herbal medicine is we combine different herbs to kind of produce the effect that we want, okay? And so what's nice about combining herbs is a lot of times, especially Chinese medicine approach to it, is we can kind of eliminate side effects, right? Anything that you take is going to have different effects, positive and negative effects. That's just how it works. Our body is a whole series of feedback loops, right? And so you can't just change one thing without affecting other things. And so herbal medicine and Chinese medicine approach um, will use kind of different herbs to kind of balance out an effect. So for example, if someone has a lot of phlegm, right, in their body, and we want to get rid of a lot of that phlegm, there's herbs that will do that. On the other hand, this can be very drying to a certain aspect, right? And so what we can do is add in other herbs that can tend to moisten a little bit right we don't want to over you know overshadow that phlegm getting rid of kind of part so we can kind of balance things out a little bit so we can balance stuff out what's nice about herbal medicine too is just like i can customize an acupuncture point prescription for you to do specifically what you have going on right it's individualized medicine Um, i can change the way that i combine herbs in such a way that I have a specific medicine for you to use um, that will kind of encompass what you specifically have going on, both, you know, whatever you're complaining about and then other things that we may be seeing kind of going on. And so mainly that's, like I said, internal medicine. So it's kind of medicine that you're taking internally. You can also use uh, herbal medicine externally, too. So I'm a big fan of medicine making as far as for external applications. So I make liniments and poultices and stuff like this. 
and I like to use. And so these are things that you can apply to like joints and stuff like that. Or if you have a traumatic injury, you know, there's stuff that we can use that can reduce swelling and inflammation really well, help stop mm-hmm. pain. So you can use it a lot. Um, and so it's like I said, it's a whole other kind of thing. And so all this is just it's just another tool in the toolbox kind of thing. It's another approach. That's to incredible. Help people. Yeah, I enjoy it a lot. It's good results too. Do you have something, Cal? I do. So another movie that relates to this is yeah. with Steven Seagal. Not the Godfather. When he. No, it's not The Godfather. It's actually Steven Seagal. And I forget what Steven Seagal movie is it, but it was one where he got all beat up at the beginning of the movie and had to go into hiding or whatever and heal himself. And he put the That's like the fire every movie, on the- Gil. That's every <laughs> But in this yeah, one, he used- Steven Seagal's got he- a cool... He used the acupuncture with the fire on it to heal himself more quickly is what I'm saying. And I'm just saying, again, it relates back to a movie. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> just wanted to throw that in there. There's a good uh, good example, another here movie thing with some herbal medicine. Is, I don't know if you guys remember the 90s movie Sidekicks with chuck norris um but in that movie the the young boy has uh he's got asthma right and his his uh his martial arts trainer he gives him herbal medicine and and along with his other stuff right he cures him of his asthma so there's an you know it's the bad tasting tea but yeah that's uh herbal medicine too so there's another movie chinese medicine thing for you all right yeah you're gonna cure me Uh, my asthma good yeah and and don't forget (laughs) Mr. Miyagi cured the Karate Kid just with his hands. Just saying. Okay? Hey, real, real, real quickly, this triggered a memory. Uh, when my grandma was really sick, when I was really young, she had these two men come in, or my mom had them come in and perform like a ritual they called laying of the hands. Mm-hmm. And they came in and they, you know, said these prayers and they laid their hands on her and stuff. And she, like, she felt better after she said. So it's, it's, it's that's just one of those weird things I did. Sorry, Kel. Triggered a memory. Oh, no worries, no worries. So, Chris, you know, before you, what, you know, what's one thing that you wish that you would have known before you got into this this line of work, this career? Uh, biggest thing that I think I would have kind of wish I would have known a little bit is because it's been a kind of a struggle for me is just that most likely you're probably going to be a small business owner. Um, you're probably going to be working for yourself right now. The way kind of industry is, this is still kind of not necessarily a mainstream thing. And so there's not really a lot of jobs unless you want to work for another acupuncture or something like that. So I kind of wish I would have had more business development training or kind of more of a background in kind of running a business or entrepreneurial stuff, something like that. I had some from kind of my other interests, but that's kind of the, the hardest thing for me is I like to help people and I like to use this medicine and I like to practice. Um, but the reality is, you know, you have to run a small business. And so that's that's always a struggle for me marketing and the accounting and the inventory and you know keeping all up with this kind of stuff it uh kind of detracts from what i like about it um so i always when i'm talking to new students or prospective students i always try to emphasize you most likely will be a small business owner working for yourself um, and so you really need to kind of understand the ins and outs benefits and drawbacks of kind of what that is um, for anybody that's looking to get into the industry you Good know, insight. That, yeah, it's going to be a big part of it. So, Chris, um, why don't yeah. you think it's more mainstream? Why isn't it uh, accepted by, I don't know, mainstream medicine when it works? I think it's, it's you know, part of it is it's kind of, it's new. And I think it's, uh, I think what's interesting about it is, you know, the way that we talk about Chinese medicine and the way that kind of scope of practice works is everything has to be framed within the language of Chinese medicine, right? So we have to talk about it within that kind of framework. Um, And so these are kind of concepts that are 
kind of foreign to kind of Western mindset, right? We're talking about these ideas like everyone knows chi, right? Energy and blood and body fluids and yin and yang and all these kind of stuff, right? And we're talking about meridians, these things you can't see, and I'm putting needles in you, and it's right, it's weird. So I think that's what it is, is there's just there's a disconnect from kind of normal society about how you would approach things. I think so many people are versed in basic scientific ideas, right? That, and we're kind of based in this tangible reality. Um, so that when we kind of talk about these intangible things or these things that kind of don't have a even equivalent, um, there can be a disconnect where we immediately will write it off as, you know, like, right. you know, witch doctor stuff or, you know, superstition or kind of primitive thinking. And I don't think that's, kind of the way either so you know it works it works and you know and a lot of people too want to talk about you know oh it's all placebo effect but you know you can look at veterinary acupuncture right animal has no oh, wow. incentive for you know faking that or how can you get a placebo effect you're not telling the animal what right. you're going to do right um but you can see animals you know get better you can see animals you know i was talking with a uh a veterinary acupuncturist a little while ago talking about using acupuncture and electrical stimulation to you know correct paralysis in animals that had kind of lameness in their back legs so wow. you know you can't you can't really fake that it's gonna they're gonna walk or they're not gonna walk this was the way she put it you know and there's kind of those examples of that so you know I can't, I really don't know why uh, people don't accept it more. I think some, a lot of people do. And it's kind of like you're saying before, not everybody talks about it, but I think if you use it yeah. and you try it and you get results, you know, you kind of understand, okay, well maybe there's something to this. Um, you know, it is what it is. Give it some well, time. It's only been around, you that, know, a couple years. thousand that years. Brings up, <laughs> yeah, just a couple 50, thousand. 60 in the that United brings States, up a right? good question. Yeah. That brings up a good question. Cause I don't think people know, a lot of the ailments that you can treat with acupuncture i think people just say you know pain you know you can only treat pain but chris i know there's a lot of other things that you can treat with acupuncture right yeah definitely um like i said it's kind of a nice kind of all-encompassing system and so you know common things that i treat you know pain obviously especially musculoskeletal pain uh, neurological pain, you know, like sciatica and these kind of things, or neuropathy, you can treat these things. Um, but, you know, just about anything, I treat digestive disorders, respiratory disorders. Um, I do a lot of mental health stuff. So, you know, depression symptoms, anxiety symptoms, insomnia, wow. you treat a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, we also have things for kind of, there's stuff for epidemic diseases. There's you know, herbal medicine is kind of a big player in some of this stuff too, but the way that kind of the framework of Chinese medicine works, it's really like a system-based approach. And so there's this system that kind of, you know, we can kind of categorize almost any kind of ailment that someone comes up with within to these kind of what we call patterns, right? And this kind of tells us what's going on and why it's going on. And then it gives us a framework for how we can treat it. So if I can sit with you long enough and ask you enough questions and kind of get enough data from you, both from kind of what I can see and like look in your tongue and see and feel your pulse and see, and then ask you the right amount of questions, I can figure out kind of almost anything, what's going on and why it may be going on. And then we can have an approach for how we may be able to treat this and help you with this. So just honestly, just about anything we can at least make an attempt for. And a lot of times we can get results for it. Wow. That's just, that's just incredible. I think that's so cool. I personally believe that there is an herbal remedy or treatment or cure for any ailment. We just need to figure it out. That's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff with herbal medicine. Um, you know, you can do a lot with it. And I mean, even if you look, honestly, you know, most drug research that's done you know, a lot of this is they're finding a active ingredient in a plant, right? That showed effects for something. They're isolating what they feel is the active ingredient and then they're synthesizing it to produce that. So a lot of your modern drug research is coming from herbal medicine too. So, you know, plants, yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I think plants offer a lot of solutions uh, for people's problems. I think, like you said, you just gotta find the right thing um, and that's, you know, that's the important thing is, you know, these plants are very powerful. And so you, you can't just willy nilly kind of take stuff. You really need to understand 
what's kind of going on, right. what that plant does, what the safe dosage is, and how you apply it um, to make sure that it's done safely and you get the effective results you want out of it. So, I was just, it, I just would, am blown away by that. Yeah, I think it's cool. What would you say is one common myth about your profession? Common myth about the profession? Um, well, everybody always asks, does it hurt, right? That's not a big one. You know, usually it doesn't hurt. Most of the time, you know, sometimes you get a little close to something. Most of the time, it shouldn't hurt, right? If you have a skilled practitioner, it shouldn't hurt. Um, that's kind of a big one. Uh, other one, you know, it's all placebo effect. Like I said, you know, I don't really think, I think there's things that we can do to disprove that. Um, those are kind of the big ones. I don't know. Do you guys have a, a myth about acupuncture you want to want me to debunk or talk about? Well, I was, you know, I just would like to know where it came from. We talked about that, you know, it's just so incredible. It's been around so long in Asia, you know, I mean, I am, I'm blown away. And like I said, I think I believe it, you know, um, I believe you have to, like you say, you have to have a skilled practitioner. I don't know if I would just show up with anyone's, I'd have to make sure I had someone who had like Kelly's opinion. I would trust her opinion. So, Chris, you're now my man. Okay, sounds good. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, and it's funny because the first time that I went and saw Chris, I told him, if you hurt me, I'm, I'm not coming back because I was afraid. I didn't know, like, if these, I had heard it wasn't supposed to hurt, but you are sticking needles in me. And it's a trip because he's doing this and I'm like, well, are you going to do it? And he's like, I'm, I'm done. It's like, oh, no <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like, I, it's, it's amazing to me how you can stick a needle into somebody and they not feel it based on the point it is on the body and how that point on the body then reacts with another point on the body and it takes away the pain. I mean, for those of you that don't know, I had chronic back pain. My next step was surgery and I didn't want to have surgery. And so yeah. my only option, the only thing that the doctors offered me was surgery, or pain injections. And I did the injections until they no longer worked. So I was out of options. My other option was surgery. And then I found Chris acupuncture and I've been pain free for like, I don't know, three years. And so that brings me to another question, Chris, that, that people have asked me. It's like, how long typically does like a session last? I know not time-wise, but like, you know, when you take a pill, they can say that pill is going to last for 12 hours, right? Or whatever. On acupuncture, is there a way to gauge, like, if I do this, this is going to last for X amount of days or whatever? I think it's hard to give that type of a, a concrete number. And kind of, you know, here's the thing. The approach to treatment generally is... <clears throat> excuse me, what we really want to do is correct uh, kind of the way that we look at things. Like I said, we have these kind of idea of patterns, right? And so this kind of tells us how things are kind of out of balance in our body. Okay. And so a lot of times what we're trying to do is correct whatever that is. So when we look at something, we can see like, you know, a certain organ is kind of over functioning or there's a lack of circulation or, you know, this organ is under functioning or whatever. And so what we're trying to do is kind of correct that imbalance by, you know, herbal medicine or lifestyle change, diet change, acupuncture, whatever it is. Okay? A lot of times, you know, we kind of have a cumulative effect. So if you come in one time, you may feel good for a few hours, right? Or a couple of days. And then if you don't come back, right, we're kind of back to where we were. Whatever change I had started to do kind of goes back because there's still this kind of pattern that's going on. And so really what we need to do to get good lasting effects is I need to see you for a little while. And generally, you know, within a few visits, generally for the most part, for an acute kind of thing, or you're really wanting to start treatment, for most things, usually within like three to four visits, we should be getting some good solid results and seeing some things start to change for a long term. And it's kind of that cumulative effect. So I see you for, you know, one week, and then we start to make some changes, and then I see you the next week, and that kind of builds and builds and builds and builds, right? And so I think... You know, that's kind of the area where a lot of people fall out of acupuncture. You try it once and then you say, well, it worked for a few hours and then it didn't work, you know, and then my pain came back. And so I didn't go back to that person. 
Uh, but yeah. you know, it's uh, you wouldn't take one pill right from the doctor and then expect everything to be cured, right? You're going to take the course of treatment. And so that's kind of the important thing to think about with acupuncture is that it's a course of treatment, right? Just like anything else, and that you need to complete the course to get those good effects. But you know, certain things, you know, if you if we get you to the point where you're kind of pain free consistently. You know, then let me see you in a little while and check in with you. And we just kind of check and make sure things are back on track. So it's kind of variable um, depending on what's kind of going on. There's not like a hard and fast kind of thing like it lasts this amount of time. Some things, though, like uh, moxibustion, right? Moxibustion, uh, we can use it for kind of stimulating immune response. Okay, And they've shown that, you know, using moxibustion on this point, stomach 36 on your leg, which is kind of one of our main immune boosting points that that can increase uh, immune system activity and white blood cell count for up to a month right with just one treatment so that increases your immune system function for up to a month with one treatment so you know there's probably some more research out there that shows how long this stuff kind of lasts um, from a single treatment uh, my big thing is just you know you need to, it, it depends on the individual all us like i said is an individualized medicine so depending on the person and what that's going on, how long that condition was going on, and then how are we doing treatment and how compliant are we with kind of the treatment plan, those that's really going to determine how long the treatment and how long those effects are going to last. Could you have mentioned something that was at Meridians? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, the idea of Meridians or... Yeah, what, what are those? What is that when you talk about that? So, you know... Uh, a lot of people will see, uh, you know, like pictures of acupuncture charts, right? And it's got the guy and he's got all the lines on him and everything like that, right? So a lot of times these are the meridians, okay? Or they're called channels or acupuncture channels. Um, and so this kind of is this idea that we have these, these kind of, there's a network throughout our body, right? That kind of goes through every cell and organ and tissue and everything else. And these are kind of ways where what we call chi and blood kind of flows through the body. Okay, and kind of gives nourishment to our tissues and helps with function and everything else, right? So it's kind of this all-encompassing kind of networks that runs through the body. And then the acupuncture points kind of lie on these, on these meridians. And so these meridians will go over certain muscle groups. They'll connect to certain organs. They have what we call uh, kind of uh, internal pathways and uh, kind of just external pathways. Um, and they kind of... Uh, kind of give this they're just like another kind of network so you have your blood vessel networks your nerve networks lymphatic networks and you have like this kind of this meridian network um, and it's just a way for us to kind of manipulate that kind of if you want to call it energy whatever it is or that organ function and um, it's a way that we can kind of access and manipulate and make those changes in the body it's also a way we can do diagnostics too by kind of feeling along those channels um, to kind of see you know are those muscles really tense and tight you know, is there tenderness on this channel? Do these, you know, is there, the muscles really flaccid and weak? Uh, you know, it can be a diagnostic method too. So the channels are just another kind of way of kind of, they're just another kind of facet of this medicine. Does that kind of answer your question a little bit? I, that, that gives me more information. Thank you. That's interesting. You know, they have things like that on around the earth called ley lines and they have to do it with energy and stuff. I think we were talking about energy in some of our earlier episodes too so yeah i mean just kind of all connect you know a big part of chinese medicine too is this idea of what we call the microcosm and the macrocosm right so this kind of smaller part of us kind of is a reflection our human bodies are a reflection of nature as a whole Right. And a lot of the basis for Chinese medicine and the, the systematic approach to it was based on observation of nature, the, the what they call the five elements in nature, the seasonal changes. Right. And that's kind of this pattern idea is it's almost looking at the weather and kind of structure of the body. And so, yeah, I mean, that kind of makes sense to me that if, you know, we have this essentially ley line system you know, on the body, it makes sense, right? That we maybe have this on the planet or other kind of, you know, overall, you know, in the universe at large, right? We can see, right. what's always interesting is scales of organization, right? You can look at, you know, a cell, right? And it has all these different parts to it that all do a specific thing. And you can go up and you look at an organism, right? A person, and it has all these different functions. It's got a thing to take an energy, a thing to get oxygen, a thing to get rid of waste, right? A thing for movement, 
right? Then we can look at cities and countries and you know, the world, mm-hmm. right? And we all have these scales where it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but it goes down and down and down too. So it makes sense that to me that we see these same structures or functions as we go larger and larger in, in reality. That, that is so interesting how things can all tie together if you really take a minute to look at it. Um, Kelly, anything from the Godfather about this? Not on this particular <laughs> part of the conversation. No, if I have a way to relate it, I definitely will, but I don't. So, you know, Chris, um, somebody had asked me once, like, how long are the needles um, that you use? Or do you have different sizes or different widths of needles to treat different things? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh... There's different needle sizes and there's different needle gauges. And so depending on what you're treating and what I call the target tissue is, like where you're going to put that in someone's body, um, there's going to be different kind of needle usage. So me normally, like my everyday go-to needle is a 36 gauge uh, inch and a half needle. Okay, That's an inch and a half long, but it doesn't go in the body that far. Generally for most things, you know, you're putting a needle like maybe a quarter to a half inch at most into somebody's body. Um, Other things, like if I'm working on like sciatica pain or something like that, like in someone's hip or glute area, you know, I've used three, four inch needles before. Um, Generally, if you're going to go deeper into a structure, a longer needle, you're going to want to use a thicker needle. Um, Other areas, like if I'm going to needle someone on the face, like for sinus issues or headaches or something like that, I'm going to use a thinner, shorter needle. It gives you more control. Thinner needle, generally, you don't feel it as much. Um, If I'm treating patients with like anxiety or sensitive patients or kind of weaker patients, I will generally use a thinner needle. Length, like I said, doesn't really matter as much. Um, It really depends on your control and how deep you need to get into the body. So some of those deep structures, you'll need to use a deeper needle. You'll need to use a longer needle. But like, you know, other stuff like the face, you know, I'm using maybe a half inch needle. And again, you're just going a little bit, gives you more control. Um, When I do acupuncture in the ear, I'm using, again, a really short needle. Again, probably a half inch or smaller. uh, Because you want a a good amount of control so you can be very precise with kind of how you put the needles. Interesting. Yeah, that answers my question. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. So, Chris, is there a? Oh, sorry. So no, uh, go ahead. Um, do you? We, me and Kelly were talking about how things now are changing. Where things are shifting more to more people are believing the, in the paranormal and things like this. Do you see a trend where more people are accepting uh, acupuncture and herbal medicine more so than they did in the past? I think so. You know, I think as, you know, it starts to be accepted in kind of a medical perspective, um, you know, in mainstream medicine, you know, I think you're going to see that more and more as people use it more and more and they tell people about it, like how you guys are talking about. Um, it kind of comes into kind of collective consciousness a little bit more as an acceptable thing. Um, and, and so I think that is as people are exposed to it, they try it, they see results from it. Um, as you see, insurance companies starting to pay for it. Big thing recently. Oh, wow. Medicare has started to uh, very, very limitedly. Uh, but Medicare yeah. is starting <laughs> to pay for acupuncture and certain kind of conditions uh, but with certain kind of criteria on it. As you see that go along, you know, it kind of gets more accepted. You know, the VA has an acupuncture program that's kind of growing. That lends legitimacy to it. You know, the United States military has been using uh, auricular acupuncture for uh, pain management and treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, uh. Acute stress disorder. These are kind of huge kind of things, too, that kind of lend a lot of legitimacy to these uh, to acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Um, And so, yeah, I think as, you know, more people are exposed to it, we talk about it more, people see results. And yeah, I'd say definitely people are becoming more and more kind of uh, open to giving it a try. Wow, that's cool that, you know, at least some insurances are covering it and the government's using it to help veterans. You know, that's that's nice. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it's uh, insurance is a game. 
Uh, <laughs> it know. is. But, uh, you it know, is. I mean, like I said, it, it lends some legitimacy to it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that's part of it. So, you know, but I think that's what it is, is, you know, chiropractic was in a similar spot, you know, however long ago, where it was seen as kind of this fringe type of treatment, right? And as insurance started to accept it, you know, it lends this legitimacy to it because they're willing to pay for it, which means it must be, there must be something to it. And as they became right. more accepted within the insurance game, it became more accepted in medical communities. Uh, you know, you get your training up there, you get people getting doctoral level educations as a standard, which is kind of what's happening in acupuncture uh, education right now. Um, those things kind of add that legitimacy to it where people start to accept it and becomes starts to become a normal thing. And that's really in the United States. You know, acupuncture has been used you know, in Europe and Germany, um, France, you know, in these places for a lot longer and been accepted for a lot longer. Yeah. It's just the American system is a little, some places were a little bit kind of behind on, uh, on a, we are. You know, in a way compared to the rest of the world. Yeah. So if you wanted to get one, one thing out to the public about acupuncture, what you do, what would you, what would you say, Chris? I'd say one, you know, give it a shot. Right, if you think it's going to work, but I think the most important thing is to look at the training and qualifications of your acupuncturist. So really, you know, that's my big thing about everything is kind of safety and efficacy. So you really want to make sure that your acupuncturist is. Uh, are we still recording? We're still recording. I'm not sure. There she is. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Uh, just training and efficacy. Uh, so you know, you want to look for somebody who has that uh, that degree background. You want to look for somebody who has that board certification. And I would say, you know, a lot of people right now can do acupuncture that aren't acupuncturists, That's chiropractors. Fair. doctors could do acupuncture with no training uh you know whether they want to do that or not you know there's things like dry needling which in colorado only requires a weekend course people can put needles in your body so that's my big thing is if you want a weekend try, course <laughs> that's crazy yeah 14 that's hours and you shit. can get started you know and then you, wow shit. that's that's crazy stuff to me uh, that is so, you know, that's the biggest thing is, you know, what's the training level of your practitioner? And so, you know, I would encourage anybody, if you want to try acupuncture, you know, find someone who has that national board certification in acupuncture that is a trained acupuncturist. You know, you want to try it once, you know, your chiropractor may be an excellent practitioner, um, but I don't, I can't really say what their acupuncture level of training is right. or a medical doctor or someone else. So that would be the biggest thing is just look at the training that any practitioner, you know, look at the training and make sure that they are a legitimate uh, medical professional and that they can give you the care that you need. Yeah. I'm not going to go to a doctor who like went to a weekend course and have them, you know, treat my cancer or something you know i mean that's just that's silly i don't understand that and why you yeah. want to go to someone who just had a 14-hour course that's scary too i did not know that oh, about dry good. needling um you know i did not know that that dry needling was just a, a weekend course and that you could do it but i do hear more people talking about dry needling but just the name sounds horrible I mean, who wants that? Sounds painful. Dry needling, just the name, sounds painful to me. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I but... mean, dry needling was uh, the lady. I think the lady was name was Travell. I think she was a physical therapist. Um, and what she was originally doing was using a hypodermic needle, right, like a shot needle. Um, but there was no fluid in it, so it was a dry needling. And so kind of the idea behind dry needling, dry needling is acupuncture, like let's be honest about it. And what it is is, is trigger point therapy or what we call osher therapy. And what you do is you find a, a muscle body that's kind of spasmed, closed, or it's kind of contracted, right? And you need that to release. And so you put a needle kind of in that muscle belly, that tender spot, and you stimulate it till the muscle kind of relaxes. And so if that's really what you're doing, um, and that's why you're approaching that treatment with that technique. Um, it can be very effective. But if that's not really what's going on and you're just putting needles in somebody, that's 
kind of a kind of a I don't know, could be a risky thing. Yeah, a little bit, you know. And like I said, you know, you can at least in Colorado, you know, these people who do dry needling training, they can start within 14 hours. They have to do additional training, but I believe they have a couple years to complete the other hours. And I don't, I think it's 58 or something like that. So it's not a lot before you can get started. Um, but again, my thing is safety. I mean, you know, if you're needling into someone's shoulders, you know, your lungs are just a couple inches under here. So if you approach that, you know, this way when you should be going this way, right? You can right. puncture someone's lungs. Same thing, chest or back, right? That's part of the acupuncturist training is angle of insertion, depth of insertion, underlying anatomy, all these things that, you know, we specifically need to know so that we can practice safely um, where, you know, over a weekend course, you may not have uh, the time and the training to kind of understand that. Um, and so, like I said, safety is kind of an important thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Definitely. Well, Chris, I know that you're, you know, obviously based out of Colorado, but if people wanted to reach out to you and uh, talk to you more about, um, you know, getting acupuncture, whatever, how, how do they reach you? Um, you can check out my website if you want to learn more about Chinese medicine um, and about my practice and kind of how I work. Uh, my website is uh, www.southdenvertcm.com. TCM like Tom, Charlie, Mary or traditional Chinese medicine. Um, I've worked for a long time on writing a whole bunch of articles and information about Chinese medicine and all the different kind of modalities that we've been talking about today. So there's a ton of information on there. Um you can email me, southdenvertcm at gmail.com. Um, we're on Twitter. Um, we are at S-D-A-H-M-C. Um, I'm also on Facebook, South Denver Acupuncture and Herbal Medicine Clinic. Uh, we try and put out good articles and information uh, as much as I can. Like I said, the business part is a little hard for me, the marketing part. But we try and put out good information um, on a semi-regular basis. We're trying to increase that. But those are kind of ways that you can connect with me. Perfect. Perfect. Right on. James, anything else? Do you have anything else, James? No. I mean, that was, I really appreciate you coming on, Chris. That was very informative. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah. Always you got to stick too. around. You got to stick around for random bullshit because that's what's coming up next. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to pay some bills and then we're going to come back with random bullshit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, let me tell you, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and free is always good. There's these really great creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And then Anchor will take your podcast and distribute it for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in one place to make a podcast. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's everything you need to make a podcast. Okay, so we are back. So I got a couple of just random questions that I was thinking about during the week and maybe you guys can help me. So why is it or where did it come from or how did it start that people refer to their like their cars and their boats as <laughs> she or hers or girls? Just talking about where, this. Did, where did that come from? Why do you why is your car a girl or why is your boat a girl? Help me. Why? Why? I I don't know. I call my I have two cars and both of them have names. The Charger Are they Bernadette. Girls? And they're both girls, yeah. It's Bernadette and Hildy. But I don't know why they're girls. That's a good question. Chris, do you name your vehicles? 
Yeah, I we we named my car. Yeah, and it's a girl too. Um, yes! I really don't know why. But yeah. 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 yeah I'm sure that you was... have one named after someone of the Godfather. Actually, you know what? I haven't I haven't named my car, but I do name all of my plants and they are all girls. Right, except for one's a dude, but they're all girls. I just wondered about that because everybody refers to their as you know their boat is a girl or their car is a girl, and I just you know is it because women are just more reliable and dependable and and ultimately the better sex? I, I don't know. That could be it. Maybe. maybe. One more. I got I one have, more or question maybe for that you. They just suck all your money and life out of you. <laughs> not true and we're just, just gonna disregard we've heard that so i have another one so is <laughs> yeah you can't edit skip, that though. one either i cannot so wait so we we agreed that you can have soup that is cold right there is cold soups that you can eat right yes we'll both agree chris you agree Why There's, you, want you know to, there, i don't know Right, so yeah, there's cold is, soups out there, yeah. and there's hot soups. So, is cereal a soup? Wow, I have is cereal a that. soup. Is cereal cereal soup? cereal? Yeah, but I don't is know. Cereal about, soup. I don't know. If I'm <laughs> soup, right. I don't think no. that. you combine soups, all these things you cook together and it all comes together and all the flavors blend together and all the different components. And it's this, it's this thing that's better than the, than the separate components, right? Yeah. Cereal, you know, you just a little bit of A, a little bit of B. I, you know what I think is going on is Kelly's giving her kids cereal and telling them it's homemade soup. <laughs> is that what? Is that like last time the question was it's a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> hey, mom, make me a sandwich. Here you go. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I was telling them that cereal was soup. It's soup. The cereal is soup, man. <laughs> yeah. It's cold soup. Hey, and we said there are cold soups, no? Yes, we did. Yeah, like gazpacho. Tell them it's gazpacho. <laughs> See? <Of course>. Gazpacho <laughs> means cold cereal soup in Italian. <sighs> okay. Last one, you guys. Last last question I got. In one sentence, how would you sum up the internet? One sentence. It's the greatest and worst thing to happen to humanity. The greatest and worst thing to happen yeah, to, to say, humanity. Uh, yeah, and I would say it had to be like the most useful and dangerous tool. The most useful and dangerous tool. That was pretty good, you guys. That, that kind of sums up the internet. That's scary. That's some scary shit. Ooh, we could do another podcast and call it That's Some Scary Shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try to keep this one going. Right, right. Let's hit season well, that, two. <laughs> that is all the time that we have today. Chris, thank you so much for joining us and sticking around for thank random you, bullshit. As promised, I would give the links for social media. So... At Facebook, it's K and J's podcast. Okay. On Instagram, it's that's underscore some crazy shit. On Twitter, it's at that some crazy shit. And our email is that some crazy shit podcast at gmail.com. YouTube channel also is that some crazy shit. Funny thing about YouTube, we have seven subscribers. Hey, can't tell us shit. We got a YouTube right channel. And I'm and still not crazy one. Shit. And you still need to join. And, and Chris, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube <laughs> channel, you, my friend, should do so. Okay? So, that is all the I'm time we have. Yeah, thank, you. Okay. thank you. Thank you. That is all the time that we I have. Guess. Again, 
Thank you. Thank you for listening to some that some crazy shit. My name is Kelly. Thank you very much. And I'm James. Keep your minds open. All right. Until next time. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>